Good evening. Good to see everyone here. I'm very honored and very humbled to be having this opportunity. I want to take the time to thank Michelle Lewis Corrales and Rich Murata and the rest of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame staff for, and also, most importantly, Lucia Riker for giving me this opportunity to present her uh, for this well-deserved award. Um, so tonight, I'm here to talk about the most dangerous woman in the world. Now hold on, hold on before you guys start cheering and you know get, getting all pumped up, because I'm pumped up, so I kind of got to take a couple deep breaths to kind of slow my heart rate down, because I'm, this is my hero right here. I kind of think that's like an understatement. I see Lucy Riker as one of the most dangerous fighters in the world. And I'm here to tell you why. Now, Lucia, she practiced martial arts. Uh, she started judo at a very young age, at the age of six. Uh, she became the Dutch national fencing champion as a teenager. At the age of 16, she started up kickboxing and amassed an, un like an unblemished professional record of 54 and 0 and won four world titles along the way. So with that said, um, you can already see how, how much of a fighter she is. Uh, male or female, I think that's something that a lot of fighters have yet to, um, w w doesn't have the, quite have that background with, so. And yet, after doing all of that, and after beating a hell of a lot of people, um, she eventually got into a sport that we all are here for tonight, a sport that we all love and cherish. She got into the sport of boxing. Now, many people would ask why. Boxing's tough, boxing's hard. There's not a lot of opportunities, male or female. Boxing's just an uphill, help uphill battle. That's right. Lucia Riker ended up getting into the sport because she is a 100% fighter. And she's respected for her skill today and especially for her tenacity. Uh, she accomplished a record of 17 and 0 with 14 knockouts. So that's in, that's about an 85% knockout ratio. So more times than not, if you line up to fight Lucia Riker, you have an 85% of getting, chance of getting knocked out. <laughs> uh, she won two world boxing titles. The first title she won with our mutual coach, Freddie Roach. And uh, it's funny because I ended up talking to him over the phone on my way over here. And uh, he sends his best to Lucia. He congratulates you. He's very proud. Um, in fact, uh, he believes to this day, Lucia, that if you were to come back today and fight, whether it's in boxing or if it's in the cage, he would see you winning. He, he, he believes you are the best woman fighter in the entire world. <laughs> Lucia was also trained by someone we all hold very dear to our heart, um, the great late Manny Stewart. And I will start to wrap this up because I hear the music. <laughs> Okay, all right, we're just gonna shoot to the video, but yeah, all the best, Lucia Riker. Let's give her her. We'll wait for that. Oh, I like it already. <laughs> Good evening, Las Vegas. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, for inducting me, for honoring me, for all the hard work that I've done ever since I was seven years old. When I was seven years old, I pointed at the TV and I looked at Muhammad Ali fighting Joe Frazier. And everybody on the couch, we were up at five in the morning in Europe, live streaming, laughed at me. Get away from the TV. And I said, that's what I'll do, mom, dad. And they started laughing at me. That's not for girls. There was a day that women were not allowed to box, even though they did, but it was not accepted. I had a dream as a child of seven, and I stuck with it. I did judo, I did karate, but I wanted to box. I did kickboxing. I reached a plateau of four world titles, but I wanted to box. I traveled the world. And then I moved to America with a suitcase of clothing, not knowing what I wanted to do. 
And in order in America to stay, you have to do what you're good at. And for me, that was fighting. I never worked a job. All I did was fight in the ring. And as you know, for women, it's really hard to make a living in the ring. So I lived like a monk. I just could get by. But I had a dream, and I put my teeth in it. And the moment this trainer, Stan Ward, recognized me, because I went to the gym every day, and diligently, what was my therapy was exercise. Every day I worked out, because I was illegal in this country, and I didn't know what to do. And I ran through my savings, because I sold my car and my motorcycle, and because the dollar was rock hard at that time, compared to the Gildan, I ran through my money pretty quick. And then he said, let me make you a champion. And like all Americans, they were really excited. And I thought, yeah, I was down to earth European. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. I don't want to box. I'm not sure all the brain damage and stuff. And I'm a kickboxer and let me honor that. And then one day I thought, let me give it a shot. And I felt like a racehorse that got pulled out of a stable and was ready to run again. And I started training. And pretty quick, a friend of mine said, no, you need a professional trainer. And he brought me to Joe Goosen, and Joe Goosen had two champions, Gabriel Ruelas and Rafael Ruelas, who were amazing champions at that time. And he said, you have to train with him. And people who know Joe, Joe is like, you know, you're like when you train pit bulls, you go in your cage, you get fed, and you, you know, you get trained, and no questions asked. So I trained with Joe, and I was really lucky to spar with Gabriel and Rafael Ruelas, however, I started getting concussion after concussion because he never did the mitts, she just had to spar. You were thrown in, just go for it. And I remember one day he said, before he took me on, can you fight? I said, yeah, I'm a fighter. So I brought my scratch book and I showed him my kickboxing, you know, print. And he's like, yeah, but can you fight? So I hit the bag and he says, you can punch, but can you fight? I said, yes, I can fight. So he threw me in the ring and he threw one guy after the other. And one of them was, I think his name was Richie. And I knocked him down over and over and there was blood everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, this is what you have to do as a woman to prove that you could fight. And then he took me on. And his brother was a promoter and he started promoting me. And at one point I thought, hmm, as an independent woman, with an intelligence, I want to be heard by my trainer. I want to talk to him, and if I say I'm tired, that means I'm tired. I'm not trying to cheat, because I knew how to work hard. And at one point, this man came to me and he said, oh, you have to work with Freddie Roach. He's the best hand rapper. So I worked with Freddie, and he held the mitts for me, and then I started dropping people left and right at Joe's. And then I thought, okay, Freddie's a young, hip trainer. Let me go with Freddie. So I worked with Freddie, and he taught me how to work on the inside, because I was a kickboxer. I had my front kick and my low kicks. So I kept them away. Now I had to learn how to fight on the inside, which I also learned from Joe a lot with Gabriel and Rafael. Only I got a lot of concussions because of it. Anyway, after that, I worked with Freddie, and I hit another plateau. And then Emmanuel Stewart came along, and he really believed in me. Men or women, hands down, he believed in my skill, but also in the hard work I put in, with no rewards. I just wanted to be the greatest. When I saw Christy Martin fight on a Bruno Tyson undercard, I said, I can beat that girl. And I chased her, and I chased her, and I chased her. And at one point, I was on ESPN, and I challenged Leila Ali, who was a, a few pounds bigger than me, but I didn't care, because she fought Christy Martin. She stole my big payday, so I felt. I worked for that fight. However, long story short, the big fight came. My opportunity to show my gifts and talents. 11 days out of the fight, I ruptured my Achilles tendon. And for me, it felt like I climbed up a ladder or up a mountain a glacier, and I slid down, boom. Everyone was gone. My bodyguard driver drove me back home. I had surgery the next day, and here I was with my cast in my bed. 
oh my God, what happened? My dream to fight in Las Vegas, sold out house, you know, worldwide broadcast, gone. I was devastated. My publishers came three times a week to read me my fan mail. That loss of everything was actually the beginning of my real spiritual path to understand I am not my titles. I had to lose everything to realize who I am. Because my whole life, since I was a kid, I became a champion pretty early on. I had this belt and that belt and another belt and another belt. And I thought I was going to be fulfilled. And then I moved to America and I got another belt and another belt. And I thought, now I'm going to be fulfilled. And the high lasted shorter and shorter until I'd come home the same night with bruises and pains and eardrums punctured, wondering, is this happiness? I'm not going to listen to that noise. It's just background noise, right? Anyway, long story short, my, my intention is don't attach to your titles, whether you're a boxer, whether you're a businessman, whether you're a beautiful woman, because it doesn't last. Know who you are. Build your self-esteem next to the self-confidence you build on accomplishments, money, or titles. If you don't do that, then the moment the man comes with the hammer and you lose it all, you have to build yourself back up. And that is the most challenging thing. And that's what I specialize in right now. I teach personal transformation. I do women empowerment workshops worldwide. I work with troubled youth to transform their life to know that they are a champion no matter what. And that each and every one of us has a gift within them that they can bring forth no matter what area of their life. So thank you so much for having the honor to speak. Thank you for honoring me as a champion. And thank you for all the knowledge I've gained in this amazing sport. Thank you. And to present Lucia with her trophy is, Mexicans, is Mexico's first woman world champion, Laura Serrano. <laughs> Look at these two together. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. 